So with the end of the year quickly approaching, I thought it'd be really fun to do my first ever roundup of the best smartphones released this year. And 2021 was a huge year for me personally in terms of phone reviews, where I actually ended up reviewing 15 different devices, plus I did a bunch of revisited reviews as well. And in comparison to previous years, this year was a huge step up in terms of the amount of devices I reviewed. So I've reflected long and hard and I've ended up picking a bunch of winners along with some honorable mentions across a range of pricing categories. And I've also picked a winner for what I'm calling the overall best smartphone of the year. Now, first things first, this video is gonna be hugely subjective. I'm gonna own that right up front because a lot of the choices I make today are based on things I prioritize most when deciding whether I like a phone or not. And this might differ from what you prioritize when picking a phone. So keep that in mind whilst you watch this video. But the other thing I will say is that the number one rule for deciding which phones were even considered for each category was that I actually had to have inserted my SIM card into the phone and reviewed it here on my channel. There were a heap of phones released this year that I wasn't able to get my hands on for one reason or another, which is probably the reason they're not on this list. So if your favorite does not make today's video, check to see whether I reviewed it this year. I'll have a playlist linked up in the cards and down below. And if I didn't review it, that's probably the reason it's not featured in today's video. But with that being said, let's get on to the first category. Now I was gonna award a winner for the best budget phone of the year, but when I looked through all of the phones I reviewed this year that fell into this pricing category, there were actually only three. The OnePlus Nord 2, the ZTE Axon 30, and the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G. My least favorite of the three was the Galaxy A52, and whilst the Axon 30 was a pretty solid option, it's actually kinda debatable whether it should be considered budget or not. Now, I would have had no problem awarding the ultimate winner to the Nord 2, but there have actually been a number of reports of some Nord 2 devices exploding around the world, so it made me a little less confident. It was a great phone, but it feels a little off to recommend a device that's exploded even just a handful of times. So I don't really wanna recommend any of these phones for this category, so accordingly, we're gonna skip it and move straight onto the next one, which is the best mid-range phone of the year. Okay, so this was perhaps my favorite pricing tier for phones released this year. And really for me, this was a pretty fluid category in terms of price. I basically just included any phones that cost less than a thousand Australian dollars, but above about six to $700. And in this pricing tier, there were a lot of fantastic phones. So honorable mentions have to go to the Galaxy S21, the OnePlus 9 and the Xiaomi Mi 11, all of which were phones I would have been happy to continue using as my main everyday devices. And what made them all such appealing options was that they were quite a bit cheaper than their more premium counterparts, but they sacrificed little in the way of features. On the Galaxy S21, you lost out on that 10 times periscope lens and it also had a cheaper build. But aside from that, it had pretty much every other feature the much more expensive S21 Ultra had. Similar story for both the OnePlus 9 and Xiaomi Mi 11, both of which dropped the telephoto lenses and maybe one or two other small features, but everything else was pretty much included. So I still have no problems in recommending any of those three devices, but the ultimate winner of best mid-range phone of the year goes undoubtedly to the Pixel 6. I only just reviewed this phone on the channel and like the runners up in this category, it offers most of the key features the more premium Pixel 6 Pro offers, but everything else either matches or in some cases supersedes it. So yes, no telephoto lens and only a 90 hertz display, but we've got the same super fast Tensor chip inside. We've got the exact same software, which is a true joy to use thanks to all of those amazing animations. And for me, it actually has a better design and feel in the hand. I also personally felt like the speakers were better as well as the fingerprint sensor. And somehow the haptics also felt better than the 6 Pro as well. But more than anything, it is the price of this phone at launch that makes it the best value offering of all of the options in this category. The other three phones all launched north of 700 US dollars, whereas the Pixel 6 launched for a much more affordable 599. 
Like I said, all of the phones in this category were seriously impressive. But without question, the Pixel 6 is my favorite of the lot. Now, before we press on, just wanted to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, MPL. If you haven't heard of MPL or Mobile Premier League, it's basically like an all-in-one hub for really cool online multiplayer format games. You can download it for iOS via the App Store itself, or for Android users, simply use a browser on your phone to go to mpl.us and download the APK directly. Ignore any warning banners that pop up. Android phones will always show these anytime you sideload an app, and MPL is absolutely safe and secure. But once installed, you'll see that the app contains over 10 different games to pick from, including Bingo, Bubble Shooter, and 10-Pin Bowling. And throughout every single game, there are actually opportunities to win real money. Now, for some of these games, you do need to pay to enter, so tread carefully and play responsibly, but there are a number of free games as well. You can also choose to play in a variety of formats, including head-to-head -head battles or multiplayer tournaments. And you don't have to worry about being matched up against super hard components because the app actually matches you up against other players with a similar skill level to yourself. You do need to be over 18 to play the games, so keep that in mind. But if this sounds like an app you wanna try, then check out the first link down in the description below. Okay, from there we have the best flagship phone of 2021. And for me, to be on the list in this category, you essentially need to be not only above that $1,000 price tag, Australian dollars that is, but you also need to be the top tier phone in your phone lineup. This was the fullest category of the year for me with phones like the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the OnePlus 9 Pro, and even the Pixel 6 Pro, all of which were pretty great options that I quite enjoyed using. But I wanna give the first runner-up title to the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. This was a seriously fun phone to use with really impressive cameras and a super fluid software experience. Definitely flagship material, but then the ultimate winner of this category is none other than the iPhone 13 Pro. Never did I think I'd have as much fun using an iPhone as I did with the 13 Pro, but I think the main reason it claims this particular category is that it was just so damn reliable. Whatever I threw at it, it just handled with absolute ease. Seriously, the fastest phone on the market, hands down. But then the cameras were incredible with just enough features to make them really great to use full time. That 120 Hertz display was also really fluid and also super bright as well, which was amazing. And that battery life, unparalleled. This was the first time I was actually a little sad to stop using an iPhone when I moved on to reviewing the next device. But don't worry, I got it out of my system and I'm back to loving Android once more. Now, I didn't review the 13 Pro Max this year, hence why it wasn't awarded this title. However, I probably still would have been hesitant to give it the top prize anyway, simply because of how big and chunky it is. I certainly appreciate a smaller form factor and the 13 Pro offers that without compromising on really any features. So a pretty solid range of options for this category. And I know an Android channel giving a price to an iPhone might be a little controversial, but hey, it was a really great phone that seriously impressed me. And so finally, we have the outright best phone of the year. Now for me, this category boils down to three main factors. Firstly, just how good a phone was overall in terms of each and every category I place high value in. Secondly, whether the phone offers good enough value in terms of its price. And then thirdly, the really important deciding factor for me comes down to which phone I decide to leave my SIM in once I've finished reviewing every phone of the year. See, I've got a bit of a break now until I start reviewing devices again, probably until February next year. And so I'm now at a point where I get to settle in and use just one of these phones for a longer period of time. And the phone that I've picked is the winner of this category. Now, before I get to the winner, I do want to give honorable mentions to the Galaxy S21, the iPhone 13 Pro and the Pixel 6 Pro, all of which were really incredible phones that I thoroughly enjoyed using throughout this year. I was never gonna keep using the iPhone 13 Pro long term, but the Galaxy S21 was a really fun phone to use, though the haptics were a little disappointing. But at the end of reviewing the Pixel 6 Pro, I thought for sure that would be the phone that won this category. But little did I know that in actual fact, its cheaper brother would be the one to claim the title. And so the ultimate winner for best smartphone of the year is the regular Pixel 6. And for me, the reason it won against its more premium flagship brother comes down to three main components, the build, the haptics, and of course, the price. 
So the fact that the regular six has both a flat display and matte rails seriously leveled up how it felt in the hand. The 6 Pro never stopped feeling chunky to me, and I honestly don't mind a big phone, but the shiny rails and curved display alongside the glossy finish on the back made it pretty uncomfortable to hold. And I was so surprised at how much I preferred the feel of the regular 6. The haptics are also the best haptics I've experienced on a phone this year, except for perhaps the iPhone 13 lineup. But then, like I said, the price to value ratio for this phone is on another level. $5.99 for what feels like a top-end flagship in day-to-day -day use is seriously amazing. And whilst it's certainly not a perfect device, no phone really ever is, it's the one I will probably be recommending most people buy for the next six months or so. And so there you have it. Those were my winners for the best smartphones across the year of 2021. And I'm guessing there's gonna be a lot of discussion down in the comments below. So be nice, but absolutely have at it and let me know which phones you thought should have won each of the categories and why. Aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.